The Soybean School on realagriculture.com is brought to you by Pride Seeds, Preaxer Zemium Fungicide, and Cruiser Max Vibrance Beans. Bernard Tobin here on the Soybean School back in Kent County with uh, Pride Agronomist Matt Chappell. Matt, how's it going? Going well. Hey, um, it's time to plant some soybeans. I'm going to ask you the obvious question. How do you plant soybeans in this resident? Well, Bern, you know, I don't know if you remember, last year Bern was a record corn crop in Ontario. 200 bushels. 200 bushels about. For every 40 bushels of corn, we produce about a ton of residue. So we're looking at five tons. In this case, this was more like six tons yeah. of residue in this field. And there's no doubt there will be challenges to deal with all this residue this year. So what do you do? I mean, obviously, um, you know, do, do, are we gonna do a little tillage here? You know, do we do some work with a planter? How do we handle this? Well, that's always uh, the golden question, right? In some years that uh, we can be on the wrong side of the fence on whether we till or not. Uh, when you look at this field, what's positive about it for a no-till situation is the residue is left fairly high and a lot of the residue is concentrated along the base of last year's corn crop. So that bodes well for an attempt at no-tilling corn this year or no-tilling soybeans this season. Now burn if we were to till it I'm scared about you know dealing with root balls and putting in a layer, a compaction layer this spring if we have to do anything really aggressive with a disc or a chisel plow or anything like that. Like, that would be a, a more of a negative, I think, than maybe dealing with all this residue. Yeah, so you, you, you wanna have a nice warm seed bed. You know, you wanna have this residue, but you don't want it to be causing hair painting and a whole bunch of issues. What do we need to do with the planter? Downforce, what do we need to think about? Yeah, well, you know, Mother Nature's got to be on our sides. We need it to be sunny, dry. That's when we have our best conditions for no tilling, if that's what we're doing. The planter's got to have awesome down pressure. We need to maintain good soil contact and be able to do, deal with slicing through residue, avoiding any chatter if we get close to last year's, uh, uh, last year's corn rows. And of course, I love a row cleaner. A coulter does a great job. It warms that strip right where you're gonna plant. Uh, the width of the gauge wheels, hopefully you warm that band up and put a nice row down there. Or in the sense of a row cleaner, you know, we're clearing up a nice warm area too and letting the planter do the great work behind and close the trench up and uh, keeping the residue out of the way to get every little seed that we drop in the ground up in a nice consistent manner. Okay, Matt, you got the residue figured out, but now the question is, do we plant with the row or across the road? Big question from a lot of people. Uh, yeah, that is a question every year we get on what is ideal, and I think it comes down to personal preference and maybe, you know, the planter that you're pulling behind the tractor in the spring. But, you know, Burn, whether it's that 10 degree angle that's slightly across uh, last year's corn crop, uh, you really got to have the right no-till outfit on the front of that planter to make that work. And your corn stalks have to be somewhat decomposed going into that situation. If you're gonna plant with the rows, I'm a fan on controlled traffic. Uh, controlled traffic being, you know, you're trying to stick within uh, last year's planting tracks or maybe the combine tracks, but maybe swinging the draw bar so that ideally you would put your bean rows between your corn rows. Stay off of those big root balls and those corn stalks from last year and band right down. And that is one way to get a good consistent ride down the row. My fear is if on an angle to the rows, we don't get speed right and we have changing levels of topography or residue across the field, we may get too much chatter or catch a lug the wrong way and we have all of a sudden two, three feet of a gap within our soybean stand. Final question for you, and that is planting date. Um, a lot of chatter this winter about that window. You know, yeah. April 20th to May 15th, lots of potential in there, but there's some other things you need to think about here. You get a lot of questions about slugs. Yeah, yeah, so a lot of good data to say, plant your beans early, we extend our photo period, we get lots of flowering, better flower retention. Uh, I still believe in that, but a lot of growers say, Matt, we're dealing with five, six tons of residue. 
the perfect environment for pests. Cool, wet, they can stay underneath that residue, they're thriving, slugs love that environment, but what do slugs not like? They don't like sunshine. They don't like a warm band where the soybeans are growing if we clear any of that residue out of the way. So, you know, when we follow the rows and we have good residue management on our planter, particularly in the no-till environment, we can minimize our risk to slugs. Uh, we can take, you know, significant slug damage back to maybe minor slug damage, minor slug damage that the crop can grow out of and grow past and still thrive. Uh, without taking significant stand loss into effect. So I think that, you know, planting with the row, pushing the residue out of the way, letting that band warm up and uh, letting some sunshine warm things up and dry out a little bit more is gonna be one of our ways to reduce our risk to slug damage.